In part five, we uh, are going to go over the design steps for the flexural members, singly reinforced beams. And um, basically, what are we given? We're given the dimensions of the, uh, the section, the cross-sectional area, and the reinforcement ratio, or the steel, right? And we, we're looking for, or we're, we're given the, the loading, and then we're looking for those dimensions. So we have one of, one of two things. Either you're given the dimensions and the reinforcement, you're just checking. This is an easy piece of cake you can go with. Or we don't know how big is the section. I, I just know how, how much loading I have. Uh, but it's an iterative process, simply because the load also comes from the dimension. So the dimension is a self-weight, self-weight is a load, and then, so a lot of times what we do is we assume some sections, or we assume some uh, dimensions of how it looks like. And <clears throat> how we start with is that we start with, for the beam, how is the ratio between my B and my D? That ratio is very economic when it is between one and a half to three times, right? So your D should be about three times your B. Preferred to be about two and a half, so we can start with this, give a nice assumption for the B. A nice starting assumption for the B is between two, 220 to 300, and, uh, sorry, 250 to 350 uh, millimeters. And then, of course, for us to have a ductile behavior, a good start for the row is to be less than row 0 0.005. What this ensures for us is that my phi equals 0.9 and my FS has uh, a value of F yield, which means my rebar has yielded, right? And this is the link to the video that explains how to use the tables. We're going to go over the tables very quickly. This is the table A2 that talks about the uh, bar sizes. So if I have, um, I don't know, 4, 5, 16, 4 number, that's the number of the bars, 5, 16, I go here, I go here, I pick up this number. So I know the number right away. That saves a lot of time, right? Uh, this is the table that explains how to calculate my beta 1, my row uh, for tension control behavior, my maximum row for, for the old code provision, and the minimum amount of steel. This is all row. So we have to take those numbers and then convert them to area steel by multiplying them by B times D. And the next table is calculating the flexural resistance factor. We will know very soon what is R. That is depending on F yield, F prime C, and the given row on the section. And then the next one is maximum number. This is the C S minimum check. So we're checking C S again is C S minimum. Okay, if you go beyond this, for example, if I go uh, instead of three bars of number 19 and a 25 or 250 millimeters, that means my C S will be smaller than my C S minimum. Do you understand? So this is very important to uh, try to understand why I'm using this table is because I always want to make sure that my C S is bigger than or equal to CS minimum, right? If I picked up more than this number, if I put placed four phi 19 in a B equals 250, then I violated this. This will not work. So this is simple uh, check for you. Instead of calculating the CS and CS minimum, you just look at the table and see what the maximum amount of free bars are. And then A8 is the same, but for S max, I need to make sure that my S is less than my S max. This provision was uh, explained in part four. <coughs> and then going to uh, table A9, I have four slabs of a B equals 1,000 millimeter, and F yield equals 420. This is the calculation for phi MN directly because it is, uh, it is an, uh, one of the factors is fixed, which is the B. And then I have so much limits on how deep the slabs are. Normally slabs are not more than, uh, or commonly used to be between 75 and 300. Now what is R? Let's think about this resistance factor or flexural resistance factor. When I'm calculating the phi MN, 
I always go over a lot of calculations, the first of which is calculating the A, assuming that F yield had been achieved, right? And then if I put A in the calculation of, in the, in the big equation of Fmn, remember that? So I substituted A here, and I substituted the area steel with rho BD. Why? Because rho equals area steel over BD. Right? So I, I just take those two factors and place them, plug them in here. And then this will end up with that big equation. Now for that big, big equation, take out BD squared, and then everything inside here becomes your R. Why did I do this? Because everything inside here is basically your steel ratio and your material properties. So for any section, Having any B and D, R could be the same. What does R depend on? R simply depend on F prime C, F yield, and rho. So for any steel ratio, same F yield and F prime C, my R is the same. So same, same of the three, R is the same. So they kind of converted that big um, factor, all of these big numbers, and for us to save time, we put them together as a one factor. So in fact, this reduces the effort of calculating all of this by just picking up any steel ratio, I'll be able to know what my Fmn right away is. Does that make sense? So once you know the R, you can simply calculate your uh, Fmn. Now the procedures of the design. Now if I know, let's think about it the other way around, if I know my dimensions, so I know the B and D, which is very common. So for example, you started, you say, I'm gonna use 250 times 600 beam, and I calculated the load, the load came up to be this MU, whatever the, MU equals this 250 methanon, uh, just as an example, kilonewton meter, right? And then I ended up with this number, and then I want to know how much steel to use. Right, think about this. So what's missing here is the area steel. Now from that equation, we were able to pull out, look at this equation here. Now I can simply solve this equation for mu and find r. From r, find rho. So from this r, I will find the rho. Let's think about it again. What's missing here is I know mu. I don't know the area steel. I know the applied load. So please replace the MU with Fmn, or the other way around. Replace Fmn with MU. And then find R, and once you find R, you take it and go back to this equation and find rho. So we saved this all of this time, and we just simply wrote, what is rho required in terms of MU max. So we, we saved all of these steps and we placed, we said, if you have an MU equals 250, take that 250, plug it in here. With your B and D, F prime C, F yield, find your row required. That row required will ensure for you that your Fmn at the end equals your MU. So now if I increase this a little bit and increase B or D or this, you'll be in a safer uh, state. Okay? Now the procedure for the design is calculate the own weight of the beam, which is part of calculation of MU, obtain all the factored loads, MU max, and then if I don't have area steel, I will not be able to calculate D. Does that make sense? Because D requires the bar diameter. So what do I do? I can simply say, let's just take out some six and a half centimeters used to be like four centimeters pr plus this stirrup plus half the diameter, right? Because I want to take the D, but I don't have all of these information, right? So I need to take out this to be able to find my D. Then what did I do? I can simply say just H minus 65, six and a half centimeters. Or assume a bar diameter. Say, for example, I will use phi 25 and then work your way 
on this assumption and then find your area of steel based on the 525. Very simple. Don't stop somewhere because of something. Now the next step is calculate your R. How do I calculate my R? I simply plugged in MU instead of VMN. So I use the demand to find R. And then once I find R, plug it in here and then find row required. Now I know what my area of steel will be. So my area of steel will be my row required. This is the area of steel required. Will be my row required times D times B. Okay? Now I got my area of steel. Right? We have to make sure that before, before we proceed, we have to make sure that the row required that I obtained is bigger than row minimum. Right? Because you might have really small moment that you end up with a row that is less than row minimum. And in this case, you cannot take it. You will have to use row minimum. Again, if I'm, my row that I obtained is less than row minimum, then I have to use row minimum. Because this is the minimum amount of steel that we're doing. Now, if row required is larger than row B, what is row B? Row balance. It is preferred to increase the section size so that we can use the strength, the full strength of the reinforcement. Think about this. If I have row that is really, really high and it's bigger than row B, what happens in this case? Then your FS is less than F yield. This is not a preferred design because now we didn't yield the steel. This is not a, a ductile behavior. Okay? So in this case, use a reinforcement or try to limit the, your re reinforcement to be less than row balance. Now, if it is not, then increase the section size to be able to uh, change your row balance. Then calculate your area steel based on what you've done in the pre previous procedures. Use table A2 to calculate, to select the bar size, A7 and A8 to check the reinforcement spacings, and then check your updated VMN again is the MU, and then provide a, a sketch uh, for the cross section of your beam. Okay. Uh, an important question that comes is how thick shall my section be? And I, a lot of you guys in your projects had to go through this example where if my section looks like this, what is my depth? How do I take it, this H? Where do I get it from? The ACI has this nice start, which is called the uh, design limits. This is under the design limits of ACI. In the section of, you will see this in the section of uh, beams, in the section of one-way slabs, in the section of two-way slabs. And <clears throat> how we do this is you see what the conditions of the beam is, simply supported. It is simply L divided by 16. This is your L. L divided by 16 is your minimum depth. You probably all used this before. If it is one end condition, that means it is the first in the line of your beams, right? in a continuous beam. If it's one end condition, it is this. If it is both end conditions, like this one, for example, this is a both end conditions. All right? And then if it's a cantilever, what's a cantilever? Either a clear cantilever by itself or something like an end cantilever, like an overhang in a continuous beam. So in this case, everyone needs to be checked in your system to see which one governs and you take the deepest to be your, uh, your beam depth, okay? So this is very uh, important as a starting point where you go. Then you can go deeper. You cannot go less than this. Simply because if you go less than this, if my equation here, L over 16, for example, gave me 500 millimeters. Let's just say this as an example. If you ended up using 450, you'll have a problem of serviceability, which means your deflection will be high. You might make it safe under the applied loads based on your area steel, because you can put too, too much reinforcement, right? But you might have a problem with your deflection. So you'll have to check your deflection against the loads. So it is preferred to just keep it either with those numbers or larger than those numbers. <clears throat> Let's go over an example. It says the, a reinforced beam of rectangular cross section with B equals 275, H equals 600, 600 millimeters is, is to be designed at the section of the maximum moment 
service dead load, so M dead equals 70, including beams on weight, and the service life load, M life equals 140, uh, positive moment uh, bending, right? Material strength is 21 and 420, and it is a concrete is normal weight, use number 10 for stirrups, so it's 275 times 600. Go over the design, we calculate from M dead and M life what MU is, right? This gives 308. Two assumptions are made. Number one is that the reinforcement is on one layer. Number two is that diameter of the bar is 29. Because I don't know the diameter yet. I don't have the reinforcement. What do I do? I just calculate D based on this assumption. And this equals 535. Now, if things become really different, we can change later. But this is our first assumption assumption to start with. Now I calculate R based on MU. So this here is my MU. I substituted, remember what my R equation is? Phi MN, right, was equal to Phi R B D squared, right? So what did I do? I substituted this with MU, right? And then I found R. Here is R, it became 4.34. We can either use the table or calculate it from the equation. This is brought up from the table, A5, or use the equation, it will give the same answer. Right, and you can go to table A5 and check it yourself with the specified F prime C and F yield and uh, the row, <coughs> and find the row. Now, we have to check this row again, it's row minimum. Now, I need that much of steel. How much steel do I need? 0.01 to steel ratio. I have to check it against row minimum. Row minimum is the maximum of these two numbers from the equations. We can simply pull them out from the table A4. Row was bigger than row minimum. It's okay, we can proceed. And then find area steel, just row times BD, that is 1765 millimeters squared. How much is this in terms of steel with a phi 29? We picked up the phi 29 as our bar size, right? Then you go to the table A2, right? Go to phi 29, right? Use the phi 29 and find how many bars you need. You will find that 3 number 29 gives an area equals 1935. It is bigger than what you need, then you're good, right? Now, when I want to check the spacing, table A7 and A8 does not have a B equals 275. So in this case, we have, to we have to calculate it by ourselves. So what do we do? We have CS minimum, which is a larger of diameter of the bar and 25, so this is diameter of the bar, and then calculate CS based on having three bars, right? So that gives 45, bigger than CS minimum, good. Now there's another thing that some smart people would do. If it's a, uh, 275, I can simply check the 250 and check the 300 in table A7. I can simply check the smaller and the bigger. If both can work, then this one can work. Does that make sense? If the spacing is good for 250 and good for 300, then it is good for 275. If one of them is not good, then we have to check it by hand. And then check the S max. It is the bigger of these two equations, right? Remember in this equation, Fs equals two thirds of F yield, right? And then I keep going, calculated S, S is smaller than S max, then we're good, and we can proceed. Now the last thing is to calculate my phi MN. Why do I have to recalculate it? Simply because my area steel is not the updated one. So plug in the area steel that we got, and then find your A, your C based on beta one, and then find C over DT equals this, less than that, then my phi equals point nine. If it is less than three eighths, then your phi equals point nine. Remember the three equations. Find your phi mn equals three hundred thirty eight bigger than mu, then you're good with your design. Now the final design has a three bars number twenty nine. Okay? So the three bars number twenty nine were able to take the applied loads. Now those are the procedures for designing a section with unknown dimensions. What do I do? I estimate the own weight. 
obtain all the factor loads, and then use table A4, decide on the tensile ratio rho to be between rho minimum and rho 0 0.005. So I'm making sure that it's above the minimum and it is not all the way up to where uh, it will be compression controlled or away from the tension control. And then this value will make my phi equals 0 0.9. Use table A5 to find R. Plug in the R along with the uh, MU to find BD squared. There is another equation between B and D squared, which is D is about three times B, right? Or maybe two and a half, whatever you choose. And then try your best to make the B in the multiples of 50 and bigger than 200 millimeters to be able to fit two bars with the stirrup. Calculate the required area steel equals rho BD. Now I need to get back and check whether or not my B and D will work. And then, so the next one is to use table A2 to choose the size and number of bars based on the, uh, based on the amount of steel that we picked up from the row. And then uh, find overall H and round both B and H to the nearest 50 millimeters. If area steel in one layer, then my H will just add the concrete cover, stir up and half a bar. If it's more, then we have to use full bar plus half a layer spacing. Use table A7 and A8 to ensure that the selected beam is adequate. That is basically the CS and S check. Revise the design, design and recheck that phi MN is bigger than or equal to MU. Now, knowing B and H, knowing the right B and H, we can update the self-weight that gives us the correct MU. Because we already assumed a number at the beginning and then we continued based on it. Then the same thing, calculate D based on the selected H and obtain the right phi MN. So this check is to revise what numbers you had based on the approximations uh, or the truncations that we did during the uh, selection. Provide a design uh, sketch at the end of your work. <coughs> Example 2.5, uh, sorry, 5.2. We have a simply supported reinforced concrete beam has a span of 10 meters and is subjected to a service uh, uniform load, WL of uh, 24 kilonewton per meter, right? Uh, design the beam section to resist the factor of external bending moment given, F prime C, F yield, and the concrete cover is 40. Stirrups to be used is number 13, so now I know that DST is about 13. As a starting point, use Rho equals 75% of Rho 0.005, right? So this is a starting point for us to get going with an insurance that my phi equals 0.9. Maximum aggregate size is 19 for the purposes of checking your spacing. How do I start? I will say it's a simply supported beam. If it's simply supported, it's L over 16. So I start from there. L over 16 gives me 625. Let's assume it's 700. So I just went bigger because this is minimum, right? Somebody else might say, why not 650? That's fine. Pick up the 650 and keep going and you will get a safe uh, beam at the end if you follow the steps. Now let H over B equals two and a half. Then I have 700 over two and a half. It is 280. Say B equals 300. So my initial design values are 300 by 700. I didn't know the beam size, right? Now I know the beam size. I can calculate the own weight. I can calculate MU based on the life load that was given. And then I calculate MU uh, max because this is exactly in the midpoint. WL squared over 8, I got 555.6. Now if those guys get to change at the end, I have to go back and update my MU. Agree? So this is very simple procedures. Now my next step is I will assume that I have a single layer. That means my D equal DT, right? I was given a row to start with. What was this row? 75% of row 0 0.005. Where do I get this from? Either the equation or the table. You find this equals 0 0.0181. 75% of it is 0 0.0135. Use this, and of course this will be bigger than row uh, minimum, right? And then from this find R. So I have, once I am less than 0 0.005 rho, then I, ha I know that my F is equals F yield and my rho equals 
uh, 0.9 <clears throat> and then my next step is get the R once I found the R either from the table or from the calculation from the equation 4.99 I got R plug it in here just to make sure that my BD squared when I get the B and D it was a correct one right so this is equal 1.23 times 10 to the power 8 yeah, because this is BD squared and then I get, uh, for an economic design, I have let B over, uh, D over B equals 2 and a half. My D equals 2 and a half B. Then I have two equations, two unknowns. I get D equals 676, right? And then uh, calculate area steel based on the two numbers I just got. Give me 2470. From table A2, we try three number uh, 32. That gives me a little bit less number so this is lesser than what I got but it still can work because we know that the B and D can be a little bigger and then H equals 747 where do I get this from I got my D and then I added to the D all what was subtracted before the clear cover the stirrup and half of a bar and then I got 747. Remember, I started with a 700. Now I ended up with a 747. So I will update my section to be 800 instead of 700. And my B equals 300. Okay, why is this 300? Because I ended up here with a 270. So this one could stay as 300. The assumption I assumed at the beginning, this one will be increased a little bit. Now somebody will say, what if I stuck, I stuck to the 700? I'm just not going to change it what would happen you will just require a little bit more reinforcement which is fine and you can still be safe so this is not like a set in stone procedures that you have to follow but it's just something that tells you how to go by unknown sections now for the new section i calculate my new d right which is 731 my a based on the new d and the new area steel which i got it's 144, calculate the C, equals 170. C over DT gives me a value that is less than 3 8. So that is a fee equals 0 0.9. I calculate my updated fee MN, that is 612. And then I compare it to my MU, and it should be OK. Then sketch my design. This is how it will look like. It is a bottom steel because tension is uh, on a simply supported beam is in the bottom side.